Hi, my name is Thomas and today I'm going to show you how to create an interactive portfolio using Adobe XD. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to open up Adobe XD and we're going to make this for a web page. So once you have your first artboard open, you're going to want to start by what I always do is put a little icon for the photo of the creator. So you want that in the top left hand corner, that's typically what I do. So after that, um, so before we actually put any contact, content in here, we're going to want to go through and create a layout. So what I just did is I created a circle and then within that circle is going to go the profile picture and then I created a line here which is going to separate the creator's information from their creative assets. So we're going to increase the width of the line I just drew just to add some more dimension to the page. Then you can grab it and drag it back and forth to try to either center it on something or center it on the page. So I'm going to center it on the page. And now I'm just going to put some filler text just for information that we're going to want to add later so that we can adjust sizing now instead of later. So the reason I just type them all in one is so that now it'll be aligned perfectly and I don't have to worry about alignment when I type these in. So then down here, you're going to want to have um, as many different sections as you'd like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put different types of photography that we'll be putting in here, since this is going to be a photography portfolio. So if you do control C and then control V, you can copy and paste something and then you can just drag over that copy of it. So now we have three and we want to make sure that they are the same size and since they overlap a little bit, we're going to size them down just a little. Hold down shift so that they keep, oh, don't do what I just did. Make sure you only have one selected and hold down shift so that it keeps the same ratio so that they all be the same size when you size them down. And you want to have them equally spaced apart. And then you want to make sure that they're all centered within the region of the page that they're in. So you want to select them all. While the artist is going to have three separate areas of focus for the photography, today I will only be building out one of them, but I will show you how to do that so that you can do the same thing on your own. So our first section that we actually will bid out today will be food. The other sections are landscape and macros. So right now these are just to give us a layout of what we're going to be building and give us some direction to where we're going to place everything. So now that we have somewhat of a layout of the first page, what we're going to want to do is build out the layout of the next page. So you're going to want to go here to layers. Um, right now it's just going to show us artboard since we're not selecting an artboard right now and we're going to want to duplicate this artboard. So what that's now done is created the same thing right next to it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase everything that's on it. And now here is where we're actually going to put all of the photos. I think we have about seven photos. So I think what we want to do is have two rows. Find a size for the box that fits. So now that we have two of them, we can actually select them, copy and paste, and just drag them over. So now since there is some more space, and we do want to use that as much as possible, what we can do is make the outside ones a little bit bigger for bigger photos. So we'll put those more landscape style photos at the edges, and the more portrait photos or square photos if there are any towards the center. All right, and now we can start adding content. So you want to open up Finder or however you're going to um, get to your files, whether it's File Explorer or Finder. 
and then I have all of my photos that I'm going to be using right here. So you can actually just drag and drop them into where you want them. So if you double click into it, you can actually move the photo around to center it however you'd like it. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to leave that there. And then we'll go in and we're going to choose one of these photos as the cover photo for it. And then the rest of the photos will go over here. We'll use this photo. So you want to make sure that these can be red. So my advice is to make them bold and possibly a color that will stand out from the background. You want contrast. So just for the sake of having something in here, I'm going to use, um, for the sake of having something in here, I'm going to use this plugin that actually gets a random photo for me from Unsplash. So Unsplash actually gets you copyright free images that you can use within your designs. So we're going to find a nice image like this one and just plop it in just as a placeholder. And now see how the type can't be red well, so we're going to want to change the type to a different color so that it can be red, just like that. And then we'll do the same thing for macros. And for those that don't know, macros are just close-up photos to smaller objects, just like this. So when you're doing this, when you're using a plugin like Photosplash, if you want to place the photo directly into an object, you click the object first and then select the photo you want and then click apply and it drops it right in there for you. And then you can move it around and adjust it how you like. And just like the previous one, um, the contrast isn't really well good there. So we want to change that to white. And now you can see that it doesn't really match. So I'm going to see if we can edit this text to make it match. So it's somewhat readable in white, but I think if we add a shadow, yes, adding a shadow makes it much more easier to read. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. And now, instead of using the actual creator's name, I'm going to use a content generator. So, with the content generator, I can actually just generate names and other information. So now we have Lori Stewart is going to be the name of our pseudo creator. She is a photographer and she is from Boston. So now that that's made, we can actually move over to the next page where we're going to add some of the content. So we're going to do this the same way, we're going to drag and drop the images. So some images will work better in different areas. We'll realize like some images like this one, they're very portrait oriented. So what you might actually want to do is change the layout of your boxes to accommodate for that. So you can delete one so that you can make room for something like this so that you can actually have the full picture in there. Looks much better and go through and do that for the rest of the photos. Something that's fun when doing this is to actually make your layouts a little interesting. So you can do something like this, but now we need to make sure that we have a wide landscape photo that'll fit in there. And there we go, that one works pretty well. Just checking to see how large this photo is. So this one will work there. We're just gonna have to rotate it. Oh, pulled in the wrong photo, but this one actually works quite well. All right, so now we wanna make sure that all the borders are around the same size, just for the purpose of symmetry. All right, and now up here, we can add some social media icons. So we're gonna to wanna to use another plugin to do that. I like to use this icon and symbols plugin. So we can just go get the Instagram logo. Hold shift whenever you wanna make something bigger and keep it the same size. Oh, and if you do what I just did and move something by accident, do control Z and it'll pop it right back where it was. So we can lay out all the social medias over here. What you can do when you actually publish something like this is just link it all so you don't actually have to type out any social media, like your handle or anything. If 
feel free to add any social media that you like or use. I'm just adding some of the common ones for creators. If you want to put your Visco up here, go ahead. You can use this dropper tool to get the color like I've been doing. And then once we have our three, these are the three I'm going to do. Just want to put them in their space over here, make sure that they're centered with everything else. All right, and now we can move on to actually linking these two pages together so that we'll have a functioning um, interactive portfolio. So one thing you're going to want to make sure that you do is have a button to get back to the home page within all of your other pages. So I'm going to add that right now to this page. So you're going to want to go back into icons and symbols and just type home and your home button will be right here. So we're going to drag, make that quite a bit bigger and we'll just drag that over into this. And like you can see, it's having some trouble with contrast again. So what you'll want to do is just change the color. All right, now we can actually link the two pages together. So the way you do this is by clicking prototype. And now I can turn basically anything on this page into a button. So I want to make the photo and the word food the button to get to the other page. So you'll click on food and you'll see this little blue tab and you actually simply just drag this to the page you want it to go to. And you do the same thing with food. <clears throat> and now over here you want to be able to take the home button and just drag it back to this page. And you would want to do the same thing with landscape and macros once you had those photos planned out. And you can do a similar thing with the social media icons to link them to your social media accounts. And now you can see that if we click here, we actually have an interactive portfolio. See the photos? If you want, you can be able to click these photos to go further in depth with them. Maybe you have descriptions for them that you like. Maybe you have titles for these different photos, maybe there's some significance to them. But other than that, you can just click the home button. You could go to landscape or macros if you have that built in, or you could just click your social media icons here and get to your social media. If you wanted, you could also put contact information here. That would be fine too. All right, thank you for listening today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you.